listeners today we will be discussing about a topic principles of forensic science before that let us understand what is forensic science forensic science is the application of science to the process of investigation and law in order for forensic science to be used appropriately there need to be certain principles that have to be followed in the field this is to be done so that whatever evidence is collected at the scene of crime can be utilized in the court at its best many scientists have put forward different principles which relate to the field of forensic science and compiling all of these principles we come across seven principles that relate to the field of forensic science and we will be dealing with these seven principles one by one the first principle that we will be dealing with is the principle of exchange the principle of exchange basically is put forth by sir edmund lockard sir edmund lockard said that when two objects come in contact with each other there is an exchange of matter between the two objects there is also a second part to the principle which states that the amount of material that is transferred between these two objects is directly proportional to the intensity of contact that means the more the contact the more amount of material that is transferred between these two objects for example if two people are walking towards each other and they brush their shoulders against each other by mistake there will be an exchange of certain material at the same time after brushing each other if they get into a fist fight then there will be more amount of contact the intensity of the contact is more in the first scenario the intensity of the contact was less hence there was less amount of material that was transferred when the intensity of contact increases there is more amount of material that is transferred and this material should be identified so the basis of forensic science is based on the principle of exchange where the material that is transferred can be used to relate to either of the person or an object that has been in contact with the whole scenario the second principle that we'll be dealing with is the principle of individuality in the principle of individuality basically states that every object will be having certain characteristics which shows that it is of that particular object itself there are certain aspects in a particular object will show that it belongs to that particular object itself for example human beings have similar similar features but there is certain characteristics which show that this is of that particular human being for example fingerprints iris retina so these are certain things that prove the individuality of a person similarly across all the objects whether man made or natural they will have certain characteristics which prove that it is that particular object itself for example we can prove that a particular bullet was fired from that particular firearm itself which shows that individualistic characteristic of that particular object the next principle is the principle of progressive change in the principle of progressive change states that every object will undergo change over a period of time that means if i approach a scene of crime and there is some blood over there but i have approached the scene about 1 hour 2 hours or 3 hours later at the time of commission of the particular offense the blood would have been fresh but after a period of time it would have dried it may be degraded because of certain uh, problems further the blood has undergone certain change therefore law of progressive change or the principle of progressive change states that everything will undergo change for example if i have been given a handwriting to analyze but the question handwriting is of maybe 10 or 15 years ago the person's handwriting has changed over a period of time our handwriting changes every day there are certain characteristics that are introduced every day in our handwriting so the principle of progressive change should also be kept in mind while doing analysis in forensic science the next principle is the principle of comparison the principle of comparison basically states that like should be compared with like that means similar objects should be com- uh, compared with similar objects handwriting should be compared with handwriting signature with signature a bullet with bullet and a cartridge case with a cartridge case this way we can find characteristics pertaining to that particular object individual characteristics pertaining to that particular material the next principle is the principle of analysis the principle of analysis states that no analysis can be better than the sample analyzed that means 
the importance should be given to the sample. Now, this sample basically we may, most of the time will be collected at the scene of crime itself or from the victim or from the suspect. So, that a sample that is collected at that time should be processed properly. If it is not processed properly at its source, there is very difficult procedures that have to be done on the sample in the laboratory. And if it is not processed in an appropriate manner, sometimes analysis cannot be done also. So, therefore, the, the sample that is collected should be processed properly. So, the proper analysis can be done and the sample can have its evidentiary value in the court in either in prosecuting the uh, culprit or in acquitting the culprit. The next principle is the principle of probability. Now, the principle of probability basically will be dealing with chance as to how much we can say that a particular evidence belongs to that particular person. If it is an individualistic evidence, then we can say close to about 100 percent yes, it is belonging to that person. But if it is a class evidence, for example, let us say that in a road traffic accident, two cars have collided against each other, one car has escaped and ran away. The present car that is there at the scene, we will be able to find certain paint scrapings that are from the car that has fled. We can get those paint scrapings, but from that paint scrapings, can we get to the car specifically? There may be possibilities that we can do that. But the more possibility the or more probability that we can do is, we can find out what is the make of the car, what is the model of the car. It is little difficult to find out exactly if it is that car. But if we get a car which is damaged and then we do some physical matching, then okay, fine. The probability of us showing that that paint scraping was from that particular car increases. So, the probability or the principle of probability in forensic science is very important to show that how much of chance are we giving to that evidence to show its individualistic characteristic in order to get proper justice. The most important uh, statistical theorem that we are using in forensic science is the Bayesian theorem. Next is and the final one is the principle of circumstantial fact. Principle of circumstantial fact basically states that facts do not lie, but men can and will do. So, that means we have in law two types of evidence one is a direct evidence and one is indirect evidence. In direct evidence is basically all the eyewitness testimony or oral testimony that has been given by witnesses or victims in the court of law. And we all know that these testimonies can be fabricated, okay, can be influenced. Okay. So, the, we do not want these kind of evidences to prove the innocence or prove the guilt of the person, because maybe the oral statements are not true. Therefore, circumstantial evidence, which is nothing but the evidence that we come across from a forensic point of view, every object that leaves a trace, every object that is gathered, every object that is analyzed should reveal something. For example, if I walk into a room and I switch on light and I walk out of the room, after 5 minutes somebody goes into the room, sees the light on, that is a circumstantial evidence. That the light was on, that means somebody has entered the room or if the door was opened, somebody has entered the room. Okay. So, circumstantial evidence is very important and collection and preservation of that particular evidence is also important, because that particular object cannot lie. If the light was on, means I was present in that room or somebody was present in that room. So, these are the seven principles of forensic science that really need to be followed from the start of the crime scene till the end where the report is being sent to court. Without all of these principles, the weightage that is given to the evidence in court may reduce or sometimes the evidence may not be accepted or admitted also in court, which will help in the accused getting acquitted or also help in uh, giving wrong conviction to the person.